we are going to be walking through how you would create an e-publish, uh, e-publisher or a digital newspaper, digital newsletter using Google Slides. Really, really cool feature of slides that not a, people, not a lot of people take advantage of. So we're going to start by making a nice new blank presentation. You're going to see my instant dimensions. They're not really looking anything like uh, what we'd expect for some sort of e-publication or magazine or e-book. So first step is to take care of that. We're going to go in here and we're going to go to File, Page Setup. And instead of using the widescreen or the standard, we're going to hit Custom. And we want to use a piece of paper, basically. So an 8.5 by 11 inch slides presentation. And right away, you can see already this is looking a lot better and more like an actual publication. So this next trick is only if you're really design-minded and uh, want to pay special attention to what your, what your image looks like. I'm going to start. I'm going to grab a shape here. And this is all about prettying up our design. So I'm going to add a little header section. This is going to be where our, our newspaper title is. And I'm going to choose a color for that. And we're essentially outlining what we want our template of our magazine to look like. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to add um, another image or another shape to this. And I'm going to make this a light gray color. And we will duplicate that here and copy that over so that it lines up perfectly. And if I wanted to, I could use the same shape or same color. I'm going to change my color up just to have some slight variation. Uh, you could totally use a really dark color if you wanted. Uh, we can mix this up and go light pink. I don't know. Maybe that's your thing. Uh, whatever you want, you could choose a color or a custom color even to make this what you want it to be. I'm just going to have a slightly darker area that we want uh, to incorporate. And make sure this looks OK. And that's not bad. Uh, I kind of want to have a footer at the bottom of this so that I can create some links in this footer later. So I'm going to add one more shape to this. You guys could use whatever shape you want uh, for your footer. But place this exactly how you want it. And make sure that you like what you're working with. Um, so this looks OK. I'm going to make that green. And once we have this set up the way that I want it to be set up, um, I am going to do a little trick here that's going to make it so that I don't have to worry about these boxes anymore. Um, so the boxes are just going to be a, a part of the background. So here's what we'll do. We'll go to File. And we're going to click Download As. And this is going to let me download this slide as a JPEG image. So I will do that. It's downloading. Very good. Now I can go ahead and just drag around all this and delete what it is I've created. I will right click, hit Change Background. And then I'm going to choose an image to use as my background. I could go to Choose Image to Upload. I'm just going to drag it up here from Chrome, though. And that is going to be that image. And I'm going to hit Add to Theme uh, so that it applies to all of my future slides. And right away, we have a nice little background image that we can work with. So um, next step is there might be some things you want to add that will be a part of every single slide. Um, a heading for your newsletter very well could be something. To do that, you're going to go to Slide and hit Edit master. Now, editing a master slide is going to make changes to every single slide in your presentation. So be aware of that. Even if you add a new slide, it would still make some changes to what it is you're doing. Um, so I do. I want to edit this master slide. You can see I'm looking at a master now. I go. I'm going to go to insert and word art's a great way to kind of create a good-looking title, and we'll just call this class newsletter. 
and hit enter. Now I do not like this font at all. Um, we're going to change that. So you can change word art font just by clicking on it and choosing some font that you're interested in. This looks nice. We'll resize that. And we'll make this a different color as well. So there we go. We've got our title. Um, I'm also going to add a little image to our master slide so that we have an image that shows up uh, for all of our stuff. So I can do that by going to insert image and we're going to search for uh, some newspaper clip art. You can probably come up with a better idea than newspaper clip art, but just for the sake of keeping this generic, we're going to insert that, shrink it down, and add it up into the right hand side of our newsletter. Um, I'm going to reapply to all, and this layout is going to now go to all of my slides. I'll click the X, and you can see now when I add a news, a new title slide, uh, it will give me that same layout that I was supposed to have uh, on all of my slides. So now we can start actually adding some content. So I'm on here. I don't really want this text or this text box. When we go in and we click um, to add some text, you're going to feel it's going to feel very familiar if your students have already written some pieces they could just copy and paste into some of these text box but you would obviously want to have a headline and some text uh, to read underneath uh, same things apply if we want to change up our font we can do that we can customize our font size we can customize our colors with our fonts and within this, we also have the ability to link out to other things as well. Um, that is one great piece of this, that, that these, this document, when it's done, it can link out to pretty much anything you want it to link out to. So uh, a great way to tackle a class newsletter is to share this with your students as, as a class and then assign different sections to different parts of the class so the kids all work together to build this out. Uh, another great piece of these digital newsletters, obviously we've got a lot of options when it comes to inserting images so students could go through and actually insert um, some of the pictures that they've taken already. Uh, they can upload those, they can find images from their Chromebooks, if they take a snapshot of themselves, they can upload an image that they find online as well. So we're just going to look. We'll make this all about dogs. So we'll find a good image of a dog, and we're going to insert this in. Uh, I don't really like this square setup for this image. So there's a cool feature that makes you or can really allow you to dress up uh, an image and make it look more professional in slides and that's just to click the image and then next to the crop image there's this mask image uh, air down drop down arrow and when I click that I can instantly get some different shapes so if I want to make this this dog um, more of a rounded looking shape I can do that you know I can go back in and modify my masking of this at any point yeah that I like that a little bit better and we can add images into this as well. Um, so there's some, some fun to be had with that in terms of dressing up what this looks like. The other piece that is great to incorporate, if you have class videos, things that you've done from class that you want to incorporate in a newsletter, you can actually drop a live video right here into this slides publication that we're making. We go to insert video. And as long as this is something that's been uploaded to YouTube, we are going to be able to utilize that. It's a funny dog compilation, perfect. And we can drop our video in as well. Um, so the combination of text box and our uh, image insertion and video insertion allows you to do some really neat things within this publication. Um, now to the next piece. So we're going to change our 
headline here. We're going to drop that down and we actually want to create a table of contents. So we can do this. We'll just make a small table of contents. And we can make this interactive. So page two story. We could say what that page two story is all about and then we're just going to either right click and go to link or hit uh, control K. And you can see when I go to link this, whoops, sorry I scrolled down. When I go to link this, it gives me the option for slides and presentation. So I could go to my uh, next slide, last slide, as you get more slides in there, it'll give you the option to choose from the different uh, ones. So I'm just going to go to next slide right now and apply that. Um, so you could build out an entire table of contents, which would take people to uh, more and more different options. So I'll add a few more pages here. And as we go through page three story, and you can see in this slides in this presentation, I get slides one, two, I can choose my page three story right there. Um, this is very important for allowing some linking. Uh, you can also link your images. So if this image is a blurb with a headline, I can right click that and, and go to actually create a link on that by clicking com command or control K and I can do the same thing right there. So if I want a, an image to link out to a different slide, I can do that as well. Um, it is a good idea to, if you're going to be using this, to go ahead and create a text box in your footer that we can place on all of our slides in that slide master that says something like uh, click, click to return to first page. And then we can customize that to look all nice. Make it white, bold, and bigger. And we can create a link on that as well that will just automatically take us to our first slide. Oh my goodness, that's annoying. Oh my goodness, it's glitching. That's awful. <laughs> All right, uh, to show you how to deal with a glitch. We're going to move this up higher on the page so it's actually going to work for me. <clears throat> and we can make this so that no matter what, that link always goes to slide one. All right, there we go. And then if I wanted to, I could have added this to the slide master, or I can hit control C and then just paste that into all of my pages as well. That's another way to move stuff quickly from one page to the next. So when we have the presentation in the shape that we want it to be in, um, from there, it's a great chance to publish this out. So I might call this January newsletter and the best way to publish these digital newsletters would be to go to file and publish to the web. Now you could always just share a viewable link, but that's not as fun. If you go with the file, publish to the web, it's gonna create a live document that can be viewed in a really clean and professional looking way. So I'll hit publish and okay. And then you're going to see that it's giving me this link. This is a link that I could share out with my parents via email. I could share it with them 
uh, on our learning management system. I could share it with them any way that I want to get that out to parents and students. And then when they click that link, it's going to pull up our publication as a nice, clean looking uh, live document. You can see that the videos will play uh, right there within the newsletter. We can see that the links that I added are live and will, will help people to navigate um, wherever it is they're going. We can see that my um, different pages would work as well and that also parents would have a nice easy way to navigate if they just want to flip through it as though it's a slide uh, as well. So interactive class newsletter, when you couple this opportunity with the collaboration features within slides, you can probably quickly imagine how your kids could build a really professional, really cool looking reflection of their learning in a short period of time. Um, even if it's something that you do once a month on a Friday, uh, it's a great chance for kids to reflect on what it is they've been doing and to have some ownership and share that in a professional looking way with, with parents. Hope this is something you're excited about. Hope it's something you play around with. Um, there's also a lot of other creative ways you could use this for story writing or writing ebooks as well. So thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a great day.